Hey guys, so if you've clicked on this video, chances are you are working towards your press handstand. Before we do anything, before I get you into these kind of drills, I want you to pause the video, make sure you've warmed up your wrist, make sure you've got a lot of hip mobility and openness through the back of the legs and shoulder activation as well. Once you've done that, come back to me. So the way that I'm gonna do this video is we're gonna split it into three parts. First part is going to be our activation, so we're going to get just a little bit warmer in our core and in our shoulders. Second part will be to practice the actual skill, so you're not going to get good at a press handstand if you're doing all the conditioning and you don't um, practice the press. And number three will be our conditioning side, which is going to be a little mini workout. It will be four, reps, uh, four exercises. We're going to do two rounds. If you want to do three rounds, hats off to you, but I've already just filmed a video, so I'm only going to do one. So when we are ready, we're going to start off with part one, which is activation. So we're going to come down onto our mats or onto our floor. It doesn't really matter. You're going to bring the feet just a little bit wider than mat distance. You're going to bring the hands towards the floor. You can soften the knees as much as you want. And now we just want to get active through the shoulders and get an idea of the press in action. So I want you to grip the floor with the fingers, come high up onto the fingertips, high up onto the toes, and then as slow as you can, jump the feet forward. So making these small movements, thinking of pushing the hips on top of the shoulders, leaning into the fingers, and lightly bringing the feet in towards the hands. So we're going to go with 10 in total. Once you've reached the end of the mat, you can turn around or you can just carry on in whatever room or area you're doing this in. So each time, thinking about bringing the thighs towards the belly, keep the gaze locked and slowly moving it forward. Good. I think I'm on my eight. This will be my ninth. Whew. Good. And the 10 is the last one. Amazing. So nice and light through the feet. Beautiful. Come to stand, take a breath. The next thing we're going to do is just warm up our compression strength. So you're going to lie down upon your back. You're going to bring your hands either next to the body or up and over the head. So from here, bring the feet up and over towards the floor. Take a second, knees can bend if you want. And now I want you to energetically pull your thighs in towards your belly. So create that kind of lock, that kind of tension through the core. This is where I'm going to speak a little bit weird because it is a workout. And then begin to roll. So as close as you can, keep the thighs in towards the belly. And thinking about rolling as slow as possible. Good. Keep the thighs hugging in. It should feel horrendous. It's fine. And bring the lower back to the floor. And when it does, extend the legs. So keep that lower back grounded. Take the legs as far as you can without lifting the lower back. And send the feet up and over. Doing this three more times. So again, slowly rolling. Thinking of coming into the most compressed ball as you can. Squeezing the thighs in towards the belly, rolling down. You should feel a lot happening. If you don't, get someone to hold your legs in, and you most definitely will. Good. And lower the feet towards the floor. Lift it back up. One more time. So three rounds in total. Squeeze the thighs in towards the belly. So these are good to do on their own. If you have a spare five minutes, to really work on those deep core muscles, including your hip flexors. Nice. Extend the legs, hold it for a breath, and release. Stand up and get ready for part two. So part two of this video will be actually practicing the skill. So now this is where we take time. We're not fatigued, our body's nice and warm, it's active. This is where we take time to practice the skill. Now press in. You can hire your feet onto blocks. You can also do negative presses if you've got a nice sturdy handstand. So I'm going to do it off two blocks because like I said, I don't want to fatigue <laughs> and I don't want to put too much work for myself in here. So if you don't have blocks, you can literally do these off of a gym ball, off of a sofa, anything that has a higher height. So the feet, for me, it's easier if you start off with a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. You're going to lift the feet up 
And again, if you have tight hamstrings, you can bend the knees, or you can actually come into um, tucked presses, which I'll demo in a second. So now, hands come on the floor, feet are lifted. You're going to grip the floor, set your gaze. So set the gaze somewhere in between the thumb and the wrist line. Now take the hips up so high. Think about leaning forward, push through the fingers, lift it up. Squeeze at the top if you can. Doesn't matter what it looks like. And then slowly bring it down. Good. So that is your press. Pause the video here. Start practicing maybe five to ten times, depending on how you feel. If you aren't that flexible in the hamstrings and in the legs, I'll show you the tuck variation now. So, legs can still be elevated. We're still starting off the same, but this time the feet are together. And the knees are already tucked. So this, we're getting the hamstrings out of the way, so you can still practice the press and the compression motion. So, lifting the knees up. You can stay in the bend, you can walk as forward as much as you can. Lean forward, think about bringing the knees in towards you, and lift. Oh, God, that one's a struggle for me. There we go. Raise it up. Oh, again, pause the video, practice the skill five to ten times, depending on your energy, and then come back to me for part three. So, part three of our video is the actual conditioning section. It's four exercises. We're going to go for two rounds, completing the four with a minute in between of rest. So, we're going to start off with our pike push ups. This will create strength in the shoulders and make those pushing muscles a little bit more stronger. So, if you want to, you can elevate your feet up onto a service. If not, you're just going to come into a very short downward facing dog. You're going to lift, toes up, look forward, bend the elbows back, think about lowering in towards a tripod headstand, so making a triangle with the head. Go as low as you can, and then push it back up. We go in for 10. Lower it down. Lift it up. Lower. Lift for 8. Lower. Push it back up. 7. Lower. Push, six, we've got this. Keep the core tight for five, for four, for three, keep the fingertips into the ground, for two, nearly there, last one, drop it down. Push it back up, congratulations, and come to sit down upon your bum. So the next one, V-sits. You know what a visa is if you've been watching my videos. Ten of those. So the knees can be bent again if you don't have the flexibility or the strength, or if you can go for straight legs. So coming down into a hollow body, lift it up, hands to the feet, lower, lift for nine, eight, seven, six, all the time, fires towards the belly, five, four, three, two, and one, drop it down, good. If you have your blocks near you, you can bring them and come to sit down onto your knees. So the next one will be Lalasana lifts. Again, it's working on straight arm strength, shoulder strength, and compression in the core. So hands onto the blocks, round the upper back, protract, lift the knees up without using the flexibility. So pull the knees forward, breathe in, breathe out to lower. 10, lift it up, lower it down, for 9, lift, round, pull the knees in, oh, for 8, Whew, these are going to kill me, lift it up, lower it down, for 7, lift, squeeze everything forward, lower, for 6, halfway there, push the floor away, breathe, lower for 5, Whew. lift it up, knees forward, Lower for four. Come on, Sarah. Bring it in. Lower it down for three. Nearly there. Push the floor away. Keep active. Lower for two. Bring it up. Lower it down. Last one to hold. Push the block away. Round the upper back. Knees pull in towards you for two. And one. Drop it down. Oh, heaven. 
Last ones, leg lifts. Three different types of leg lifts, 30 in total. So you're gonna come in towards your straddle first. Your straddle only has to be around 90 degrees, the same as what your press would be. So turning towards the left leg, the further the hands are down the leg, the harder it's gonna be. If you can keep the palms flat, amazing. Push the floor away, again, round the upper back, lift the left leg up for 10. Lower. Nine, doesn't matter what it looks like, even if it's a bit, it's fine. Eight. Whew. Seven. For six. Five. Nearly there. Four. Three. Two. And one, lift it up and lower. We have two legs. Opposite side, hands on the floor. Really think of that protraction. Thighs to belly at all time. Lift the leg for 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Whew. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Drop it down. Bring both feet together. Here comes, I saved the best till last, really. Hands forward, round the upper back, point the toes because it looks pretty, lift both feet at the same time. Ten, nine, eight, try and control it, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, relax. One minute break oh, and breathe. So take water if you need to. For the next round, it might be a little bit fatiguing. Always just thinking about when it comes to compression, thighs towards the belly. So keeping that core nice and tight, that's going to be the lift that you need to send the hips on top of the shoulders in your press. Little point for the press while we're resting as well is, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> what was I saying? Little point for your presses as well while we're resting is forget about your feet and legs. I know that sounds stupid, but when I was first pressing, it would always be, okay, I need to think about taking my feet out to the side. When you have the lift in the hip, when you've got the control to do that, the feet will automatically want to go up. So focus more on the core and the lifting of the hips from the stomach. Good? I wish I could have rest, but here we go. Second round, same again, pike push-ups. So short downward facing dog. Come high up on the toes, lift the hips, lean forward, elbows come back. So nice and long with the neck. Drop it as low as you can, push it back up for 10. Come forward, core tight. Nine, lower, eight, lower, seven, come on, six, for five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome. Drop it down. V sit straight away. Lower down. Hello, buddy. Lift it up for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, and one. Breathe. Grab your blocks. Second round is much more fun because I don't have to talk you that much through it. Lalasana lifts. Oh my God, these killed me the first time. <sighs> Round the upper back. Palms into the block. Good. Push the floor away. Knees in towards your belly. Breathe in. Breathe out to lower. For ten. Lift it up. Lower for nine. Lift and round. Eight. Bring it up. Seven. Keep the elbows locked. For six. Lift it up. Five. We got this. Lift, pull the toes towards you for four. Lift it up. For three. For two. Good. Now the one of death, lift it up, hold, knees in towards you as if you want to pull the feet forward for three, two, and one, drop it down. 
give the shoulders a bit of a shake, a bit of a breath, and then coming on to our lovely leg lifts. So straddle position first, starting with the left, hands around that left leg, again round. Think of the action, pulling in from the thigh. Lift for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good, shake it out. Right hand side, hands go down. Right foot up, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, good, both feet together, nearly there. Pipe position, point the toes, hands go down, last turn. 10, 9, whew, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 4, 2, and 1, ah, voila, enough. Okay, so if you want to do three rounds, be my guest. I am going to leave you now, but enjoy. Leave me comments. Let me know how much you're sweating, if it's as much as me. Mwah.